Okay, let's check out the Mono Sequencer, which is a super powerful device from the Max for Live Essentials pack. So first, let's load an instrument. This can be anything. I'm using Wavetable. You can use plugins like Serum, Omnisphere. You can use other Ableton instruments like Operator and Analog. But I'm going to use uh, Wavetable. This is the default patch. Let's make a plug sound. So I'm going to just make it a saw. Let's turn down the frequency. Let's go to the matrix and apply envelope 2 to the frequency. And make the envelope a bit uh, plug here. Maybe a bit longer. Okay, let's go uh, right here, packs, max for live essentials. That's a MIDI effect. And here is the mono sequencer. And you can also search for it under max for live, just search mono sequencer if you have max for live uh, essentials pack. And this is free if you have Ableton Suite. Let me fold the browser. So here's the mono sequencer. You don't need any clips, you don't need nothing. You just hit spacebar and start working. Now, right here, we have a few sequencers. First, we have the pitch. So I can start changing the pitch here. Um, but before we do that, notice how when I hit spacebar, it's going to just continue from here. Just going to continue from wherever it stopped. So right here under transport, I'm going to click sync. <coughs> and that's going to start it from the beginning every time. Of course, you don't have to use it. But for our demonstration, let's start from the beginning. So you can start uh, changing pitch for each step. And you can also see the notes uh, faded in gray in the background. Right, you can add notes. And you can even border the loop so it's only a few notes at a time. Nice. Down here you have the actual... Uh, let me flatten them. We'll talk about this in a second. Down here you have the actual steps that are active. And also this can be uh, just a different length. So you can create very complex polyrhythms here. Uh, with all these different sequencers that have different uh, 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 length options to them. Now, right here, uh, we have a few options. Uh, first of all, when do we reset? So, one measure. So, for example, if I put it on 10. Oh, you saw it reset. So, it's reset every one measure. Here, we can just uh, decide how the sequencer is actually going. So, up is forward, down. We can see it's going backwards. And uh, we can go up and down. So it just goes all the way up and then back. Oh, and it's resetting. So let's never reset. Right? Uh, it can go drunk. So that's going to, whatever be the step on, it might move forward, might move backward, might stay in the same, but it's going to be randomized in that way. It's just kind of on the, wherever he is, kind of backward and forward can be very cool stuff and random just randomize okay now let's make a sequence here because right here you can move everything up move everything down but it might be easier to use this kind of scale generator so here we can choose a key let's choose like g and we can choose a type of scale we have all the modes uh, so major and minor of course let's go uh let's try dorian nice and we can even randomize so here is how much is going to randomize 25 percent or we can go randomize a lot. Uh, here we can move everything up and down, left and right, or just flatten it, reset it. Um, so let's say, uh, even if you move your mouse, by the way, now, I can click Edit 2. So now it's only going to edit, give me notes in G Dorian. We can even see the Roman numerals, if anyone knows music theory, uh, to kind of make sure we know what kind of degree it is to the scale. So that's great. Let's randomize it a tiny bit. Maybe more. Okay. Nice. Now right here, down here, we can also set how it's going to reset. One measure, two measure, or even MIDI. So I need to send it MIDI. And every time it's, uh, it's going to... Oh, we didn't talk about the transpose yet. Let's go back to zero. So we can even have it reset every time we hit the MIDI note. Again, uh, how the sequencer is moving. And we can also change like all off, all, all on, randomize which one are on or off, or shift it left and shift it right. Uh, let's go back all on. 
Nice. Now, this is only one sequencer here. Of course, the gate will always be there, which step is on or off. But we can also go to velocity. Now, this uh, white won't do anything depends on the synth that you actually, on the instrument that you're using. Let's randomize this as well. So we can hear a tiny bit of volume. We need to go back to the instrument right here under MIDI. We can see velocity is affecting some of the volume. Let's turn it off. And let's do something like position. Maybe filter. Nice. And now we can hear the velocity is definitely doing something, adding different rhythms, groove. Nice. Here we have the octave. So for example, one. Let's make it sure. Right, each sequencer can have its own length. Let's make the pitch weird. Nice, here's the duration of each note. And again, this might not, uh, you might not hear until maybe we move it to monophonic and tie some glide. Let's uh, keep the envelope open so we can hear the glide. So we can hear those notes glide. Let's make it just one. There we go, down and available. That's too much. Let's bring back the filter down. So that's the duration. Here's some glider. Nice repeating is going to repeat uh, notes. So it's very cool, kind of super quick, plucky sounds. Nice. Let's randomize the pitch. Nice. Okay. Now, so those are all the sequences. Each one can be a different. Uh, we, uh, length. Here we also have the pattern, so I can go to pattern 2, now it's reset, I can do whatever I want here, and then I can go back between the patterns. I can copy and paste and initialize the pattern. And I can also quantize, so if I go to pattern 2, it will quantize to my uh, Ableton project and will only go to the next pattern uh, after one bar, which is very cool for performance. Now right here, we can actually change the amount of steps that we have. So you can have up to 64 steps. And um, what's the sequencer uh, speed? So we can also have each step is actually an eighth note. Or much faster, like 32. So that's the speed of the sequencer. Here we can add some swing. Let's turn it on. And here we can set all the sequencers to reset after one bar, two bars, four bars, or just by MIDI, or just never reset. Uh, and that's very useful for all the polyrhythms, like if you have sequencers that are different lengths, uh, can be very uh, cool to reset them a certain time, or just by MIDI, by you triggering MIDI. Now, this section is super dope. By default, uh, it's set to transpose. So that means that if I have a pattern here, I can transpose it with my MIDI keyboard. I'm just hitting notes on my MIDI keyboard. So I'm just transposing the pattern. Let's go down. Nice. Now, um, right here we can transpose and gate. That means that it will only play the mono sequencer when we hold the MIDI note. So we're going to play it, hold the MIDI note. And when I let go, it just stops. So it's kind of like a fancy arpeggiator in that way. Now we can even uh, change the patterns right here, the patterns with our MIDI keyboard. And something very cool, let's stop this, we can program the pitch. So let's go to the pitch. So if program pitch is on, now I can just start clicking notes on my keyboard and it's gonna program the pitch of the sequencer. Let's go up an octave. Right, so we can program in that way, right? I'm just clicking notes on my keyboard. Go back to a more mellow sun. 
Nice, we can even program velocities. So let's go right here and just uh, click notes on my keyboard. Nice, and we can even program both at the same time. So I'm just hitting notes on my keyboard. Excellent. So that's the MIDI. You can do so much cool stuff here. Really great stuff. Uh, this is the steps, just which step you are currently actually uh, editing. Uh, you can send MIDI through. So by default, if I hit MIDI, it won't do anything. It's just going to do whatever the MIDI says here. We can turn it off also, so MIDI doesn't do anything. If through is on, you can play MIDI through this mono sequencer. And if CC is on, you can actually map CC 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, 6 to change the lengths of the loops of the pitch sequencer and the velocity. So that's pretty cool. And here we just see the transposing. So um, mono sequencer, you could do so much cool stuff here. Immediately you could come up with very interesting bass lines and sequencers and arpeggiators, riffs. All those type of things. Let's say uh, I want to randomize this. Why it won't randomize? Let's just randomize it. So amazing stuff. And this is just with a basic sound. You can of course put whatever instrument you want after it. Now we don't really need a clip for this. So how do we get the MIDI? So to get the MIDI out of it, you just need a new MIDI track, MIDI from, wavetable, or whatever, your, whatever instrument you have the mono sequencer on, whatever track, record enable, and record a MIDI clip. And now it's gonna record whatever, let's randomize that, I don't like this. Uh... Okay, whatever, whatever you record is gonna get recorded into that uh, uh, new MIDI clip. So you can kind of uh, play around with the sequencer while recording everything. Randomize. Maybe some repeats. Right? And then we get everything recorded into the uh, MIDI clip. What's those repeats? I wonder if it, it got them. Anyway. Uh, oh, are they here? Here we go. Here's the repeats we had. Nice. So, uh, anyway, that's uh, the MIDI clip, then we can bring it to this device, whatever instrument we used, turn off the mono sequencer. Alright, we have the same MIDI. Uh, so mono sequencer, really amazing stuff to come up with melodies, uh, arpeggiators, riffs, really quickly. Uh, you just give it some time, couple of minutes with it, and you can come up with some interesting things to play around with. And of course, you can always uh, use the scale generator to make sure you keep it in key uh, for your project. Nice, mono sequencer, check it out.